So, you've been given a shiny new espresso machine. This one is a Sage, it's a very common machine. Uh, they're quite tricky things to get to grips with, so we thought it might be handy if we made a little film that would help you understand some of the basics. And what I'm going to do, first of all, is take this little bit out here and weigh some beans into this porta filter just here. I've got some scales. I would say that um, kit is something that you can go absolutely mad with. I'm going to use, first of all, only the um, kit that comes with the machine when you take it out of the box. You really need a set of scales. It just helps you understand what might be going right, what might be going wrong. If you're making a coffee and it doesn't taste quite what you want it to taste, how you want it to taste, uh, these will help you make little adjustments that will get you in the place that you want to be. We start with a recipe, which means that you have a certain amount of beans that go into the machine. You're expecting a certain amount of liquid to come out of it, and we hope that that will take place within a certain time frame. We're going to use a standard 18 grams. We're going to look for something like 36 grams coming out in terms of liquid, and we're going to hope that that will take place within about 25 to 35 seconds. Grind is also very important. Uh, I've got a good quality grinder here. I would recommend that you get your beans ground at Steampunk if you don't have access to uh, a high quality grinder. So I've got the scales here. I'm measuring 18 grams into this handy little beaker. Uh, I've got the grind setting all set up just now. You want every little particle in there because you're being very specific about your measurements. Uh, and you're gonna want to make this as even as possible. So it involves a little bit of hand tapping just to get everything nice and flat. Uh, there are lots of tools that you can use to make the way the grounds are distributed inside the basket as even as possible. But you're not gonna have those if you've just got this out of the box. So I'm gonna try and make one uh, that will replicate the way you'll be making your first coffees on your new machine. Uh, this machine comes with a little tamper which helps us to push down on the grounds to make a nice flat even bed for the machine to work with. I'm just getting rid of some of the extra coffee grounds at the side. We pop it just into this group head here. Lock it in position. As I said, these scales are very cheaply available in lots of places. We do sell these Rhino scales, which are very good at Steampunk. What's good about them is they're accurate to 0.1 of a gram. They also have a little timer because you're gonna be looking to get your shot through uh, in a time frame between 25 and 35 seconds. So I'm gonna tear the scales and hit go on the timer and hit go on the machine. See what happens. You're looking for a nice even flow, but your shot will not start running immediately. Uh, you're hoping for it to start maybe at about 12, 13 seconds, something like that, which is where we're at just now. And you can see that the flow is nice and even on both sides through these two spouts that the port filter has. So I'm carefully watching the scales. We're approaching 30 grams, so I'm just about to flick off. So that shot has landed within our recipe. I'm gonna give it a taste just so you can understand. It's always a good idea to taste it first. What you're looking for is a nice balance between um, acidity and sweetness. Um, that one works for me, that is delicious. I'm using um, Steampunk Base Camp, which is actually a lot more forgiving than some of the more complex coffees that we sell. And I would recommend that if you are using a home espresso machine. It's got lovely sweetness, it's nice and balanced, uh, and it's a very rich, even body. Uh, that's gonna work with some milk. Most machines seem to come these days with an integrated steam wand, which allows you to uh, create the kind of coffees that you will get in a coffee shop, which I guess is the whole point of the exercise. You will find that using a steam wand on one of these machines is actually a lot easier than using the fancy machines that we have in the coffee shop. 
Uh, this is because it's not as powerful, uh, which means that the steam comes through a little more slowly and that just gives you time to understand what's happening to the milk in the jug in the coffee shop that all happens in the blink of an eye and before you know where you are you've got very very hot milk. I'm going to take the jug and I'm going to move over to the side. Wand will often have a little bit of water remaining from the previous shot. You want to get rid of any water that's in the wand by purging it. Um, it just also helps it keep it nice and clean. So the steam's now coming out. You've got steam, not water, coming out of the wand, which is what you want. I'm going to turn it off and I'm going to position the wand around about five o'clock in the jug. Uh, and you're aiming to have the tip of the wand just balanced on the surface of the milk. Um, a little bit of practice will help you get in exactly the right place. But when I turn the wand on, I'm looking to hear a kind of thin hissing sound like tearing paper, which will let me know that the the steam is entering into the milk at just the right place uh, to be controllable. So that hissing sound tells me that the, the wand is in a really good place. It's just injecting some air. Once I feel I've injected it enough, maybe a few seconds, you just gently move the jug up the wand and that helps create a vortex which circulates the milk inside the jug and breaks down all the bigger bubbles that you've made uh, into a nice thin microfilm. People often talk about the correct uh, temperature uh, for the milk. You really want the milk not to boil or get too hot. Um, an easy guide to understand where that happens is when the jug is just so hot that you have to take your hand away and uh, you're very nearly there. If you take your hand away when it gets too hot and leave it for a few seconds, you're going to reach a temperature of about 65 to 68 degrees, which is a really nice temperature to allow you to taste the coffee uh, to it at its best. I'm just going to clean my wand again. Purging the wand after every shot is always good practice. Getting rid of any milk solids that may be left on the end of the wand or any water that's trapped inside. Um, it's a good idea to keep your milk moving. I'm going to tap it gently. Tapping helps break down any bubbles that might be left on the surface. And if you give it a gentle swirl, Swirling it gently will help any imbalance in the thicker foam and the thinner foam that you've got in the jug. Mixing that together to make it a really good consistency to pour. Um, you don't have to make fancy patterns, but it's surprisingly a lot easier than it looks. I'm just pouring a little bit in just to fill it up to a certain point before you start pouring to create a little pattern. We can recommend some very good YouTube videos on how to do this. And there we have our coffee.